KT7 up here. Today, I am showcasing 140 Young Sadali. He is another glove unit in the Earth Element, with Arithmeticians and Blade Soul as sub jobs. Sadali has very good elemental resistance and a lot of damage mitigation. He is a roll compression unit that can stay in the front line for a long time and heal his allies with his sequential ability. Him and Crimson Wizard are really best buddies, they cover for each other so well. Now let's take a look at his kit. We will start off with his stats. They are very similar to Crimson Wizard's, nothing really jumps out. His agility can reach 75 with support ability equipped. His dex is at 218, not a bad spot, but you would want to increase his crit rate and accuracy. Luck at 187, which is pretty good, considering semi-evade is one of his better options, and he has a couple abilities that can inflict blindness. Overall not bad for what he wants to do. Next is new glove weapon. The general ability is Magic Attack 15. For Sadali, he also gets Magic Man Eater 15 and AoE Resistance 8. Both the crit or aim type are good for him. I usually give him the crit type. Give him the Solomon's Glove if he is not teamed up with Crimson Wizard. He does have a follow-up attack, Man Eater and crit rate are important to his damage output. Moving over to his TMR. It is an accessory. The stats are HP 198, crit rate 12, defense 11, and spirit 9. The ability is a select 2, gives allies unit resistance 20, crit rate 30, and critical damage 30. These are very good effects, I gave this Luciel on a longer map and it worked out very well. Crit rate and crit damage are things that Sadali really likes. It is worth it to consider giving it to a support. Continuing on to his weapon type resistances. He has 20 to slash, 10 to pierce and 15 to magic. Has 2 negatives, minus 5 to strike and minus 10 to missile. Overall these are okay, have a negative 10 against missile could be an issue against Exia. With his support ability, he can have positive resistance against all elements. You can build him to be extra bulky against one specific element if you choose to. His ailment resistances are 50 to curse, 50 to blind, and 10 to immobilize. With a TS passive, Sephiroth has zero curse chance against him. Also having some immobilize resistance is good against Shureka. Next is Master Ability. He gets 20 Magic Penetration and 10 AoE Resistance. At level 140, he gets Healing Power 15, Accuracy 15, and Critical Damage 15. These are super good upgrades for him to do his job better. Also upgrade to his Diamond AoE Attack to include Dispel Shell before damage. Moving to his main support abilities. Number 1 is a long one. Gives him all Elemental Resistance 12, AoE Penetration 40, and AoE Resistance 15. Then there are two more effects. Gives him CT up small after taking damage when his HP is at or above 40%. The last effect reduces magic damage taken when his action count is multiple of 3. In other words, he take less magic damage on turn 3, 6, 9, and etc. It is not super reliable and heavily dependent on the map, agility, and placement of unit. Support number 2 gives him HP 12%, and healing power 20. Not very useful in most of his builds. His main reaction ability is a range 5 counter attack against slash and magic type damage. It has a 70% chance to go off and very far reaching. This is his best reaction. His aura effect can lower enemies reaction block rate, so this procs very often. Next is LB. It is a diamond AoE with range up to 6, range height and area height 1. First activates his 3 turn follow up attack then deals extra large damage. And lower damage taken by 20% for the next 2 hits. The damage reduction could be significant when activated alongside his support ability. Moving on to his buffing abilities. The highest priority is his group buff. Gives the group 50% damage absorbed, man eater 25, debuff weakening 30 and accuracy 30 for 4 turns. Plus a 4 times 50% all damage barrier for self. You can see there are a lot of damage mitigation mechanics in his kit. Next is self buff with an aura effect. Gives him 4 turns all elemental resistance 20 and dispel haste on hit. The aura lasts for 4 turns with range 4 and range height 1. Gives everyone including himself 20 AoE resistance and lower targets reaction block rate 15 on hit. AoE resistance is not what it was, but still it is good to have. 
the lower reaction block rate effect benefits him quite a lot, the chip damage from his counter can really stack up. Also his aura cannot be removed by general dispel. Next let's go over his attacks. The first ability on the list is his sequential ability. Part 1 is a diamond shaped AoE attack with range up to 5, range height and area height of 1. Before damage dispel targets shell and active magic wide guard. Then deals large damage and 50% chance to inflict 3 turns blind. Part 2 of this ability is a cross shaped AoE heal with range up to 4, with range height and area height of 1. This is very good when his team is grouped up. This ability is a huge part of his kit. Being able to heal in the front line is very strong, much like Ferris when she first arrived in the game. The second ability on the list is a unit attack with range 5 and range height 1. Prior to damage dispel shell and magic reduction effect from the target. Then deals large damage and lower healing power 40 for 3 turns. He is the first unit that can dispel magic damage reduction effect, it is great against units like Cloud, who is low-key one of the best unit against magic. The third attack on the list is his low AP ability. With range of 4 and range height 1. Remove Courage then deals small damage. This is very handy against low HP enemy with Courage. The last attack on the list is a straight line AoE with range of 3. First dispel re-raise from targets, then deal extra large damage, and has 40% chance to inflict blind. Post damage dispel all buffs from targets, and lower their buff potency by 50 for 3 turns. Dispel is always great, and if the enemies have prior to damage buff, the potency will be reduced. His main kit has a lot of damage mitigation and a little bit of everything, very well rounded. Now let's move on to his sub jobs. The first ability from his main sub is a single target buff. Increase all damage output by 20% for 4 turns. I usually have this turned off to avoid moving backwards, but this could be useful to manipulate his initial movement. The second ability is a cross-shaped AoE attack with range up to 5, range height and area height 1. Deals medium damage and dispel both AP auto restore and follow-up attacks. Being able to dispel follow-ups is really good, he really has everything in his kit. Next is Arithmetician sub. The support and reaction are pretty useless. The two notable abilities are level 3 disable for when he has zero hit chance. The other is height based cure. He does have level 4 stone arga but it is more for PvE. Next we have Blade Soul, a very strong sub job. Blade Soul Lord gives him 12% agility, 40 spirit penetration, and 12 crit rate, highly recommended. The other support is Mind Body Unity, gives him 12% max HP and 12 spirit. The reaction is preemptive counter but it only has one range. His main job counter is the best reaction from his whole kit. The two notable abilities are Slate Wiper, a cross-shaped dispel attack. And Counterman Slash, it has a plus 30 hit rate, could be very useful for him when he is not geared for max accuracy. As of this moment, I like his main sub better because of the dispel of follow-up attack. That's all for his kit. Let's move on to his VC. Sadali's card will drop one week after his release. It supports Sword Knight, Fist, Glove, and Book. That's Crimson Wizard and Summer Resnick. Earth Veritas and Ashen King are also supported by his VC. The stats are HP 347, Magic 152, Dex 28, and Agility 2. The party abilities are Unit Resistance 24, Critical Rate 2, and Magic Man Eater 25. The bestowed effects are Accuracy 8, and AoE Resistance 10. The Hollow Party ability is for Guild Battle, gives the team 12 physical wide guard. The VC Mastery is Earth Attack 2 and Crit Rate 2. This is a must-have VC for Sadali and Crimson Wizard in my opinion. It is ridiculous how good this card is for them. Even the Guild Battle effect is great. And this card will be in the main slot 100% of the time. Be sure to pick this up if you are going for Sadali or Crimson Wizard. Moving to his equipments, espers, and trust stones. His new glove gives him the highest crit rate and some more magic man eater. The Solomon's glove has 10 unit resistance and more stable damage. Both are good choices, I usually give him his new glove when paired with Crimson Wizard and Solomon's when he is not. In the second slot, go with accuracy, crit rate, and status resistances. He can also be a semi evade unit with his high chance to blind, the winter coat is perfect for that build. In the TMR slot, I like Ramada's the most. 5 agility and 18 crit rate. 
Titus's shoes is also a good choice. Or just give him agility and accuracy. His best esper is regular Bahamu, gives some crit rate and man eater. Dark Ramu is my second choice with slightly higher agility but less damage. The Ice Chariot has 20 AoE penetration and some wind resistance to help in the Shurika matchup. Orochi can give him magic pin, and Garuda has unit resistance penetration to increase his follow-up damage. If you are running him as a semi-evade unit go with Dark Odin. Next is Trust Stone, I like Luck set on the left and Agility set on the right. Vital can give him more elemental resistance, that is also a good choice. Luck set is mainly to boost his accuracy or evasion. The passives are listed here for the equipments showing below. Next sample teams. The first team is the glove team with Resnick, I will also show a Luciel variant next. Sadali is on Blade Soul for the plus 30 accuracy attack. Since Resnick is here, the dispel follow-up attack from his main job is not needed. He is equipped with his main support 1 and Blade Soul lore for max damage. His main action for the high chance to counter. His unit resistance is at 24 with no way to increase it mid-fight. AoE resistance starts at 53, can go up to 73 with his aura active. Spirit pin at 50 and cannot go higher. Magic pin is at 74 if you have Roy's VC in the sub slot, but I don't have the card, so it is at 58. AoE penetration at 40 at all times. Crit rate at 116. This is a very straightforward setup, Sadali's job is to provide some damage, counter and heal. When the team is grouped up, they will get attacked with AoE abilities. That's when his aura and counter attack comes into play. The counter damage isn't that impressive but it is chip damage nonetheless. The main DPS on this team is Crimson Wizard. Sadali can remove opponent's buff effects that Crimson Wizard has no answer to. And Crimson Wizard can give Sadali active wide guard, imperil spirit for Sadali to deal more damage, and has 3 sure hit attacks just in case Sadali isn't accurate enough. The VC that is not yet available is Exia's card on Sadali. It has 18% agility and 28 magic penetration. It is a very good and important VC for this group, since both DPS units do not have high amount of magic penetration innately. This is the Luciel variant of the glove team, there are more VCs that support her than Resnick. She can also give the team haste and re-raise to Sadali, but her healing capabilities are not as good as Resnick. This team functions the same as the previous one. I gave Sadali his main sub to dispel follow-up attacks. The third team is the Earth and Water team with Joom and Exia. This is a triple bruiser team, all three have very good bulk and healing. With Sadali's strong elemental resistances, he can protect his teams against Ramana. There are no unit resistance VC that support all three units, we just have to rely on regular Odin. Sadly, there isn't any substitute VCs for this setup. Exia's card will come in about three weeks. And Water Veritas is a strong anti-magic unit, she came back to life after Exia's release. In this setup, Sadali can take care of couple of lightning units with no issues. When against Sephiroth and Ramana, it is not an easy fight but he can do it. Next is the first mono earth team with earth veritas and ashen king. The only hollow VC I am bringing is Sadali's card. At max reincarnation, earth veritas has over 20k HP, he can tank very well. Ashen king provides the majority of the damage for this group, Sadali's damage is also not that great in this setup. His role is to provide AoE damage, blind the enemies, and heal back with his sequential ability. This team is tough to take down, but doesn't stand a chance against Sharika and Garusa. The last team I am showing today is the Evade Earth setup. Sadali can be pretty evasive, especially when his enemies are blinded. Just like the previous Earth team, his magic penetration is low and will not deal a lot of damage. His follow-up attacks often does more than the actual attack. You can also use Renoa instead of Lucio to provide haste support. Most sure hit attacker like Gildamesh's do not have damage cap increase passive, so there is very little chance of getting one shot. Especially when Sadali can keep Ashen King alive. But then running semi evade is quite risky. Alright, that's all the team I have prepared. Let's go to the VCs for the glove group, then my final thoughts. This is just a copy and paste from my Crimson Wizards presentation. The best crossover is with Devout, there are a few very strong offensive VCs that support both groups. The magic penetration card from Exia is also a must have in my opinion, but I will save that in her video. 
Now my final thoughts on Young Sadali. He is a very tanky roll compression unit. There are many damage mitigation mechanics in his kit. All elemental resistance from support and active buff. Damage reduction effects for both magic and physical. On top of damage absorption and sequential healing. His damage isn't quite impressive compared to Crimson Wizard, but as I stated in the opening, they are best buddies. Sadali can give him damage absorption and heal him back up when needed. He can also dispel magic reduction effects, remove both courage and re-raise for his best friend to finish off the enemy. The downside to Sadali is his low magic resistance penetration. His spirit pen isn't that great either, but Crimson Wizard has a 30 spirit imperil which can help him out. When he is not with Crimson Wizard, he can team up with Exia. But that is a very expensive team to build. Which brings me to say the following. I ranked him above Crimson Wizard mainly due to his damage mitigation mechanics and healing capabilities. He has much better long-term value, his kit will be useful in many situations. However, the meta is not a friendly place for Earth units. Now that we have Garusa, Wind just got even stronger. Sadali can take a few hits against Wind, but he can't deal much damage back due to elemental disadvantage. In the immediate future, Exia is a better unit. If I can only pick one, I would go with Exia. Or even start saving for Garusa. Sadali is not a limited unit, you could very well just pick him up in the 3 times reroll, 10 UR guaranteed banner that is coming in 3 weeks. But Exia is not in that banner. If you are going for Sadali, I highly recommend to pick up his VC as well. Now let's go to some sample matches. The first match of the day is against the meta team, Sephiroth, Shurika, and Resnik. There is no way Sadali can be faster than Sephiroth, so I turned off Lucille's LB and have her haste on turn 1 to make sure my team gets to cast a second buff. Sadali's first action. Grants the group 50% damage absorbed, Man Eater 25, Debuff Weakening 30, and Accuracy 30 for 4 turns. And a 4 times 50% all damage barrier for himself. Second action, Self Buff. 4 turns all elemental resistance 20, and dispel haste on hit. Plus an aura effect with range 4 and height 1. All allies, including Sadali, gets AoE resistance 20, and lower targets reaction block rate 15 on hit. After his next action, he will get the 30% magic damage reduction from his support ability that activates every 3 turns. This is his LB. Before damage activates his 3 turn follow-up attack. Then deals extra large damage, and lower all incoming damage by 20% for 2 hits. Since this is his third action, he will get the magic damage reduction effect on top of this 20% damage reduction from LB. These effects stack. The CT up effect is also from his support ability. Increase his CT small after taking damage when his HP is above 40%, up to 2 times per battle. This is his Diamond AoE attack with Sequential Ability. Before damage dispel targets active wide guard and shell. Then deal large damage and has 50% chance to land blind. Then cast a cross-shaped small heal with range up to 4, range height and area height of 1. This is his Job 25 attack. First dispel re-raise from targets, and deals extra large damage. Then dispel all buffs and lower targets buff potency by 50 for the next 3 turns. Also 40% chance to blind. Now he is using his low AP attack. Remove courage then deals small damage, but he missed.
He is going in for the re-raise to spell to finish off Resnick. The second match of the day is against an anti-Earth and anti-Magic team with Dario, Sharika, and Sephiroth. I gave Sadali the bow ties so him and Crimson Wizard can catch both group buffs and not miss out of their own self buffs. So now Sadali has active wide guard, protect and shell from Crimson Wizard. And damage absorb, man eater, debuff weakening, and accuracy up from his own group buff. My opponent's magic mitigations are now all online. Second action, gives himself all elemental resistance, and dispel haste on hit. Plus the aura effect of AoE resistance up 20, and lower target's reaction block rate 15 on hit. Unlike other auras, these effects benefit the caster as well. He is now activating his follow-up attack with his LB. My opponent has a lot of earth resistance, still have shell active, and are inside Dario's aura. Sadali is not going to do much damage. They have unit resistance from Sharika's TMR as well. That is such a good TMR item, I have been using it very often. That was Sadali's third action, and he just used his LB. So he has 50% damage mitigation against magic and 20% against physical until he takes another turn. This is his sequential AoE attack. Dispel Shell, an active magic wide guard from targets, then deals large damage and 50% chance to blind. Plus heal up his best buddy. He is using the sequential attack again. Because of the blind status, Shurika missed. This was a tough matchup. The last match of the day is Next Gen Earth against Next Gen Water. I will not be commenting in this match. There is way too many releases during the Trials of Mana collab. This is my fourth showcase video in two weeks. I really need to rest. If I have time, I will do an overview video for the FFT unit upgrades or may show off couple of the units. Let me know in the comment if you guys are interested in that video. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.
Shit. 